are the numbers changing? The number is three, four, five. A simple six. yes works. She was threatening to tase me. It looks don't like a taser. Ta don't tase me, bro. No, it doesn't. It looks much more like a microphone. I was gonna say vibrator, but sure, microphone too. I thought it looked like a taser. Look at the little. It's a lot more like a taser than a vibrator. These little dongly mm. things look like a taser. Those actually are microphones, but. No. So, hi. hi. Welcome back to Book Babble. I'm your host, John Hartness. Joining me, as always, is my co host and associate publisher from Falstaff Books, Melissa MacArthur. And with us tonight. Live from MarsCon 2020 at the glorious and overheated Double Tree Williamsburg. The Trouble is Tree? The Trouble Tree Williamsburg <laughs> is Misty Massey. Woo, hello. Hi, Misty. Hi. Queen Trouble herself. Hi. Yeah, yeah that's the truth. Sometimes. How you doing, babe? <laughs> I'm I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. good. I'm not nearly as feeling the overheated as you apparently are. Uh, I'm all right. I'm like I'm oh. not either. I'm nice and cozy right here by the fire. Yeah, I'm okay. If I had some hot chocolate, it would be great. And ginger snaps. Oh. Now I so want cookies. Travel. I know, right? I know. <laughs> I know. Dang. And see, that's the problem because I know you're saying that because I did not bake before I came this weekend. This is a double. No, tree. I they actually hadn't even thought cookies. of that until just now. <laughs> now, however, where now are my I'm cookies, in Misty? <laughs> okay, cookies next. Cookies at Jordan Con. All right. I promise. Yay. See, everybody we're interviewing tonight will be at Jordan Con. Are you going to be at Jordan Con? Because yes, yeah, ought to come to Atlanta. Oh. It's a good show. Come join us. It'll be cool. You'll love it. So, Misty. Yes. What's going on? What you got coming out? Well, um, if everything goes according to plan, I'm going to have several things coming out this year. Um, I've got a um, the second novel in my Kestrel series is supposed to come out awesome. in spring. Shooting for it being out just before Jordan Con. So and what's that called? It is called Kestrel's Dance. Excellent. And um, does for those she dance? Of you, she does. Yay. She does. She dances. She dances to make her magic happen. It would be kind of a shitty title if she didn't. It, it really would. It wouldn't make any sense at all. Do we need to talk about Anna's song? There was a song. Her she, brother was a musician. I know. There was within a song. The last, well, yeah, shut up. <laughs> Not my best title. Yeah, that's why I became Honest Dance. Oh, is that what we finally settled on? Literally yes. went back and forth about that damn title so many times I don't remember what we landed on. Yes, because the last line is then we danced. Oh, I just romantical. write them, y'all. I don't remember them. It's pretty. It's romantical. It is. <laughs> it's really Kind it's of really, murdery. Yeah, it's very bloody. I was going to say, Kestrel's dance is not romantical. I mean, there there's a little bit of romanticalness in it, but mostly it's pirates being pirates and, and doing their piratey thing, but dancing to make the magic happen and then doing piratey stuff. You know, how you do. Word. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't. I don't dance. Oh, I do. I mean, I could dance if you I wanted were. to. Yeah. You could leave your friends behind? Because if they don't dance... Well, they're no friends of mine. That's right. <laughs> so I you've got I something. Safety dance. Oh, that's the U, that's the YMCA people, right? No, 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 it's men without hats doing the safety dance. <laughs> I am a child. Y'all need the to 80s. blow up the comments <laughs> about Melissa not knowing safety dance. I will teach Melissa. We appreciate the, safety the dance. fact that she's a child, and Misty and I are um, not. I'm a grown up. It's, it's really easy. It's really easy. You just jump around in time with the music, and every now and then you make a big S with your hands. And you See, kinda it's the village people. No, they do no. Y, M, C, and A. This is S. Completely different dance. That's Egyptian. Yes, that's the bangles. <laughs> that, no, that's, that's this. Yes. This I can do. Walk, Walk like an Egyptian. Egyptian. I need that one. Yes. <laughs> Why are they named after bracelets, though? I don't know. Okay. Uh, not they my call. They didn't ask me, so. Okay. I just <laughs> still kind of have a crush on Susanna Hoffs. Hmm. 
Yeah. 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 Um, so what else you got coming out? You said you have several things. Well, um, so Kestrel's Dance is coming out in the spring. Actually, the next thing I don't think is coming out until next year, but I have turned in the first novella in a series for Falstaff Books. What? And um, it's uh, in the Shadow Council archives, and it features Doc Holliday, Returned from the Dead, with a mission to complete. And um, he's working for the Shadow Council, so it's all very exciting. So is this going to be more like Winona Earp Doc Holiday or more Tombstone Doc Holiday? More like Tombstone Doc Holiday. I'm your Huckleberry. He's, you are. And he's, since he's back from the dead, he's also healed of his tuberculosis. So there won't be any more coughing into, into hankies and leaving blood spatters everywhere. Well, that's good, because nowadays we got DNA. Right. And, and nasty. Yeah. Vampires. <laughs> But in vampires. I mean, you can make like tea with that or something. Yeah, I guess you probably could. Yeah. I now have weak this. Because it's tuberculosis. So. But vampires you. can't get <laughs> sick. But it would taste bad. It'd oh, weak. okay. <laughs> weak tea. Oh, I see. Weak blood tea. Yeah. Oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. I was working too hard for that Not joke. comedy writers, y'all. No. <laughs> yeah. I just kill everybody. That's true. Wait, so, FBI? I didn't mean that literally. Hey, look. Thanks. Wow. Ha. Oh, it's. Don't tell him about Safety Dance or he'll take this away. We'll tell you later. Yeah. So, that's how my cider should always be delivered. Just throwing that out there. Um, so, Misty, tell us about your favorite book that you've read recently, or tell us about a book that you love from your childhood. Okay. Babble about a book, Misty. Babble about a book. Well, um, we're here at MarsCon, and the guest oh, of yay. honor is, I know, the guest of honor is Scott Lynch, and I got to meet him last night, and he's a delightful person, and You're I'm welcome. so glad I got to meet him, and I got <laughs> to meet him because John made him sit still so I could get there. <laughs> and, um, but Scott Lynch wrote a book some years back called The Lies of Locke Lamora. Fifteen years back. Has it been really? that long? Really? He, as wow. he said that last night, that it released in like 2005. Okay. I, I just remember... That's the year my kid was born. Oh, man. Hey. It's still, it's, it is one of the best books I've ever read. It continues to be one of my favorite books ever to this day. Um, I... I love it because I'm a huge fan of heist movies and heist stories, and this is the ultimate fantasy heist story. It's about Locke Lamora, who is the leader of the Gentleman Bastards. They are a, an underground street criminal organization. Uh, they delight in fine wines and fine foods and stealing whatever isn't nailed down. And um, he and his best friend, Jean Tannen, end up having to work for the Grey King, who is another criminal leader who's trying to take over the city of Camor. And they have to figure out who the Grey King is, figure out how they can get out of the obligation they're in with their heads intact, and maybe make a little money at the same time. It's a great heist book. Sounds um, great. If you like things like Ocean's Eleven or uh, Leverage, if you are a fan of Leverage, you would really like this book. I, I love it. And I promise I'm not trying to fangirl because Scott Lynch is somewhere in the vicinity. I really do love this book that much. <laughs> but he's not in the room currently. He's so. not in the room currently, yes. And nope, he doesn't even, currently subscribe to our YouTube channel. So, So okay. So but see, he see hopefully honest. might before this airs. Yeah. Well, that's okay, but he doesn't now, so I'm being completely honest. Right. You know, I, he, we were on a panel together yesterday, and one thing that he mentioned was that one, Ray Feist was one of his big influences, and uh, Feist was one of mine as well, and I definitely told him that I could 100% see some Jimmy the Hand in Locke Lamora. Right. So that was, a, that was a really good homage that he paid there to one of the best fantasy writers of the latter half of the 20th century. He did, he did. Cool. And I highly recommend it. I do too. Misty t turned me on to the book, and I also love the book, so. It? Not yet. So it's now we have list. to make Melissa read it. And then she can babble about it. Yep. Yeah, because you, you're the one who got me to read um, Sandman Slim. Oh, did I? Yeah. Okay, and you liked it? Yeah. It's really good. 
Yeah, and I'm I'm so excited because I get to meet Richard Cadry in the spring. We'll so, have yeah. him. We'll have him on a show in a couple of months. Yep. Yeah, That's I'm a fangirl that time. Okay. You're we're allowed. Both, we're both going to fangirl. We'll just come at him from either direction, and okay. he'll have to sit still. Uh, I'm not going to fangirl. I'm not going to fangirl over Richard Cadry. I'm just going to, you know, run the comedy set. Right. But he's awesome. I fanboyed over him the first time I met him. Right. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us for a few minutes for Book Babble. And we will be back with another episode from MarsCon. And until then, I don't know, there's a giant Baymax running through the lobby of the hotel being chased by Ghostbusters. So It has orange plugs on its butt. You know, just that's the, Just the normal noises in here. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. Bye.